In 2015, a small NASA spacecraft crossed the darkness of the outer solar system and flew past a world most people thought they already understood. Pluto, just 2,375 kilometers wide, was supposed to be a cold, quiet, frozen rock. But the New Horizons images revealed something completely different, landscapes so dramatic and bizarre that they forced scientists to rewrite what we thought a dwarf planet could be. Stay with me because we're going to dive into these images and uncover what really awaits us on the edge of the solar system. This small world orbits the sun at an average distance close to 6.4 billion kilometers. Its orbit is quite eccentric and inclined, which makes a full journey around the sun take 248 Earth years. So far from our star, the cold rules everything there. Surface temperatures don't rise above something around minus 218 degrees Celsius. In area, it spans approximately 17.6 million square kilometers. As for composition, estimates suggest about 70% rock and 30% water ice. Pluto isn't alone. We know of at least five moons, with Charon being the most prominent discovered in 1978. This companion is roughly 1,200 kilometers in diameter, more than half the size of Pluto. The result of this near balance is a double system. The shared center of mass for the two doesn't lie within Pluto, but in the space between them. Curious, isn't it? The New Horizons images opened an unprecedented window onto the surface. A portrait taken from about 35,000 kilometers away, later enhanced to approximate what we would see with the naked eye, showed an intriguing detail. The count of small craters is surprisingly low in many regions. What does that suggest? Either Pluto has been very lucky over billions of years, or geological processes have been renewing the crust often enough to erase the scars of impacts. Since the first hypothesis is unlikely, scientists bet on the second. On Earth, wind, water, and vegetation cover craters over time. On Pluto, other mechanisms seem to play a similar role, covering and reshaping the terrain. Another feature that jumps out is the contrast between very bright areas and very dark regions. Among known bodies in the solar system, Pluto shows one of the greatest brightness contrasts. It loses only to Iapetus, a moon of Saturn, famous for having one dark hemisphere and one bright hemisphere. This mosaic of light and shadow hints at active processes and variable compositions on the surface. At the center of this landscape lies an icon, the vast ice plain known as Sputnik Planitia. The name honors the Sputnik satellite, the first human-made object to reach space. The plane appears almost unmarked by impacts, as if it had been smoothed not long ago in geological terms. Some studies point to an age under 100 million years and the possibility that reshaping is still happening. At first glance, the texture resembles frozen mud with cells and grooves that trace out a polygonal pattern. And where would the small striations and marks come from? One hypothesis points to rare but persistent winds capable of slowly sculpting the volatile ice surface. On the edges of Sputnik Planitia, breathtaking mountain ranges rise. The plain's gentle slopes meet uplifts that, in scale, do not fall short of Earth's. Among the most impressive peaks are the Norgay Montes, which reach about 3,500 meters in elevation, and the Hillary Montes, which stretch along the western rim and rise by something around 1,500 meters. The material of these mountains isn't rock as we know it, but water ice. At such low temperatures, this ice attains rigidity comparable to stone. How such mountains formed on a small body, far from strong tidal forces that could wrinkle the crust, remains a puzzle. What internal process could raise entire ranges on such a frozen world? A high-resolution mosaic also reveals a corridor about 80 kilometers wide that runs from the so-called badlands to the icy areas, showing a transition rich in detail. The textures vary as if we were moving from cracked ground to more homogeneous ice fields. In this same set, the eye is drawn to a dark, elevated region, informally called Kroon Makula. The reddish-brown coloration stands out. The most accepted explanation involves the presence of tholins, 
a mixture of organic molecules rich in carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. These compounds form when energetic radiation strikes gases like methane and nitrogen, creating materials that coat the surface and give it brownish tones. Kroon Macula rises by something around 2.5 kilometers relative to its surroundings and displays a mosaic of interconnected pits. Many are 8 to 13 kilometers in diameter and nearly 2.5 kilometers deep. What processes create such extensive patterns of connected depressions? The answer likely involves cycles of volatile ice and seasonal variations that promote erosion and collapse of the terrain. Speaking of volatiles, Pluto has an extremely tenuous atmosphere. The gaseous envelope is dominated by nitrogen, with smaller amounts of carbon monoxide and a bit of methane. Thanks to New Horizons measurements, we know this layer can extend to about 1,600 kilometers above the ground. Curiously, the carbon monoxide present there has temperatures around minus 220 degrees Celsius, which is close to surface conditions. Even so, the layers closest to the ground are relatively less cold, at something like minus 180 degrees Celsius. Why is the surface colder than parts of the atmosphere? The main suspect is methane sublimation. When this ice passes directly into the gaseous state, it removes heat from the surface, reinforcing local cooling. It's a delicate system of energy exchange that can influence winds and the formation of hazes. Heading toward Pluto's North Pole, the geological diversity is once again striking. The polar region is cut by long canyons. The largest reaches approximately 75 kilometers in width, while many neighbors measure close to 10 kilometers from rim to rim. The more eroded appearance and the accumulation of fractures suggest these northern canyons are older than similar systems at other latitudes. For specialists, this network is a valuable sign of a past tectonic phase, when the crust underwent stresses sufficient to open fissures and deep valleys. What would have sparked this tectonics on such a small body? Freezing and thawing of volatile ice in the interior, variations in crustal thickness, or even isostatic adjustments after large ice deposits in Sputnik Planitia are among the ideas under study. Another striking scene appears in the so-called Tumbaugh region, an area with a set of depressions not yet fully mapped. The origin of these pits remains open. A popular hypothesis points to the interplay between intrusive ice and natural evaporation, creating pockets that collapse and leave rounded marks. The fact that almost no impact craters are visible there indicates the terrain is geologically young. In scale, these cavities can span hundreds of meters in diameter and deepen by many meters. Beyond the beauty of the pattern, the arrangement of the depressions helps decipher the nitrogen cycle between the ground and the atmosphere. On Pluto, this cycle works like a slowly beating heart. Nitrogen freezes, sublimates, condenses elsewhere, and, over the course of Pluto's seasons, redraws the relief. All of this leads to an inevitable question. How does a world so small, cold, and distant show such clear signs of recent activity? The answer lies in the chemistry of the ices and the mechanics of extreme cooling. Different volatile substances like nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane freeze and evaporate at distinct temperatures. Small changes in insulation along Pluto's eccentric orbit are enough to shift glaciers, create fractures, drive thin winds, and cover ancient scars. Add to that the possibility of residual internal heat and a deep ocean, and you have a natural laboratory of cryogenic geology. The ice mountains rising beside the plain, the canyons at the North Pole, the dark patches rich in organic compounds, and the cellular plains that seem to breathe with the climate make up a portrait we didn't expect when Pluto was reclassified. Far from being a frozen, inert block, it shows a surface in constant adjustment. Isn't it fascinating to think that, nearly six and a half billion kilometers away, there's a world that changes slowly, yet changes? Perhaps the most poetic detail is this. The atmosphere, fragile as it is, stretches for hundreds of kilometers, forming a blue veil under certain lighting while evaporating methane steals heat from the surface and helps maintain the extreme cold. On a dwarf planet where a year lasts almost two and a half centuries, everything happens in slow motion. Even so, 
Each season, each migration of ice, and each thin breeze leaves signatures we can read from the other side of the solar system. Pluto may have lost a title, but it gained a personality. Instead of a forgotten dot on the outskirts, it presents itself as a complex world, with ancient tectonics, ice mountains, convective planes, and organic chemistry on the surface. And if so much emerged from a single flyby, what more could we discover with a mission dedicated to orbiting and staying there? or even in a distant future, when we can finally set foot on its surface? That's the lingering question. Until we have the answer, the images from 2015 keep inviting us to turn our gaze back to this small, distant neighbor, and to keep alive the curiosity that brought us this far. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, and see you next time.